Hey folks, taking you through the XP58 chain lightning today. Thought to myself, we have this marathon going on for a bomber and some of those missions do require a lot of bombing. And we also have a sale on premium planes right now. I've done one on the Arrow, which is a great tier eight heavy, but I thought I haven't flown the XP58 in forever. In fact, I may have only flown one or two battles in it. So would this be a viable candidate for spending some of your excess gold on? for maybe dealing with some of the bombers uh, coming up. Now, clearly there are very powerful tier eight premium heavies available. So if you have a widow or something, you're, you're probably all set. But you know, if you're looking to get a leg up and, and profit a little bit from this marathon, is this a plan that could help you? And thus the replay today. So I'm trying to dial the guns in and remember like ranges, you know, rates, all that kind of stuff. These 37 millimeters, uh, you know, essentially in terms of the rate of fire and range operate much like the tier eight um, 30 millimeter German cannons. Um, I'm not sure that the muzzle velocity matches, but just in terms of the rate of fire and general range, right? They're not a long range cannon. They do pump out a lot of damage, but they have a, a pretty quick overheat time. And you can also see we've got 450 cals on the back end, uh, which are a decent rear gun, but uh, not as good as the uh, Black Widow just because of the turrets don't flex as quickly or as widely um, this plane as a heavy does like many of the american heavies have pretty decent maneuverability especially as you see there as i wheel over in the vertical to come back through on another pass and i will say although you know the guns are a, you know a little finicky in that sense I, I didn't have a lot of trouble getting them lined up i felt like they were were pretty useful and they chunked stuff off pretty heavily and uh, I see in the in the distance there, I've got two enemy planes on the other team, by the way, the Tempest PV, the Sniper Tempest, and uh, the B-32, uh, both of which are specialized. So I've got to keep an eye on both of those. Both of them could be a problem. I can get sniped by the Tempest and the B-32, uh, excuse me, B-29C can, of course, be a problem as well. Now, you might be wondering, if I want to test this plane against bombers, why didn't I go up right there? Well two reasons one the, the first of the reasons is this he's at full health and it's specialized and i'm not confident these guns can burn down a b29c at full health i think the better bet is uh, to attack a b29c when it's already been whittled a little by the aa when you've got a little bit of the hp down you know a full-size b29c like this can have i think 2000 plus hit points and so you know there's no real guarantee that you're going to be able to get through that very easily and there are probably better ways to spend my time especially since i've just flipped this zone and it's still locked for another 14 seconds I don't know where he is on the reload and where he's going to be able to you know, turn on the bombs. The second reason is this. He's actually up pretty high. Um, and so I'm curious as to how I'm looking at this now. Just the B-29C is a massive plane and he's very small in my scopes. And I'm thinking he's probably up around the 3,000 meter mark, which tells me he's probably up too high to be very effective in his bombing. He's probably hovering up there in the red, perhaps afraid of me. Um, and so he's kind of doing that. And I'm like, eh, I'm going to move on to other things. I think I could spend my time more wisely elsewhere. So I'm going to pass through the center zone here with a rocket base, also very important to cap, uh, clear out that half dead one. And then I'm going to try and get some shots on the Tempest. I am a little nervous about his ability to snipe me. Um, it seems like he doesn't realize that I'm here. And those guns hit fast and hard. Uh, our TU-2 is coming through the zone. If we can get something down, we'll have it capped, but unfortunately he gets knocked out first and we're gonna have to spend a few more minutes in the zone flipping it over. Uh, probably should have kept going straight there and uh, let the tail gunners do some work and cleared out of the zone and come back for another pass. Um, still learning to not fight the stiff, as uh, Tempest has said. Fortunately, the bots are able to finish up on this one and I'm gonna push on to the other airfield. Uh, the remaining two zones or sectors in this map are garrisons. I'm not as concerned with them. And if you're looking at the corner, you've noticed we've still got two-thirds of the airfield left. So my calculated gamble, educated wish, uh, whatever else it might be, um, is paying off at this time. My, my gut instinct to let that, that go. Um, I try and follow that guy, but I don't want to be turning too much. So I'm just going to keep pushing on straight. And uh, we're going to look briefly at the equipment and the setup. Of course, it's unspecialized, but most of yours will be unspecialized, particularly if you buy them this weekend. I do like the elevator control on this. The up and over is pretty easy, and it does uh, retain speed fairly well during some of these maneuvers. So that's good. We're going to line up on the Spitfire. I probably only got one pass, and then I need to bug out. I can't turn with him, obviously. So I'm going to keep going straight and uh, let the tail gunners do some work and it's almost enough to finish him. Um, 
the range isn't great on the tail guns. That's part of the issue as well. But now that I'm out of the zone, of course, I can flip back around. And I whittled him down enough that, that uh, the AA was able to uh, get him out there. So now we're four zones to one. I'm feeling pretty good about where we're at. We still have that air base. And the air base actually has more cap points, which means either one of my bot heavies got the B-29C or other planes died in the zone. For whatever reason, we've been able to hang on to it. And so that has confirmed for me I made the right move earlier. But I am going to keep an eye out for the B-29C, particularly if I can put him down at squall line, um, then that would be good. I'm able to get enough shots on the Tempest on that diving move to put him out. And then we're going to take some shots at the IL-10 here. And unfortunately, uh, I think I got a little bit of a ram there. I think I got hit, and now I have an arrow on my tail, and it's just not going to happen. Um, I'm trying to maneuver him. I know that's a little stiffer maneuverability even on the arrow than this XP-58, and I'm just kind of hoping I can get him to break off, and I couldn't. Fortunately, the tail guns were able to get enough off that I can get a little bit of revenge there with the help of the bots. Our other player on our team who started off in the TU-2 has now switched to an F-7F. That might be the other reason the B-29 was struggling over there. I didn't check the kill feed to see which was the case. Um, it looks like he might be chasing him now. But I see he's at halfway, and I'm underneath him. Perfect range for a shark attack, a belly attack up here. I've got the full range of the target, the full cross section I can go through. And the guns are distracted because there's more than one target here. And so that's enough for me to be able to finish him off. I can kind of take my time, make sure the guns don't overheat. And you can see the B-29 is such a large target. And those 37s chunk so much damage that that's it. So uh, the F7F, of course, I probably saved him, I'm thinking. Uh, his health was you know, getting pretty low there pretty fast. And I'm not sure he would have survived taking the B-29 on, on his own. And it also saved me. I did not take much damage at all. Probably could have hit on the F-150, but did not feel like it. I've got two other heavies behind me. Just going to drag him up and let the others, uh, including my friendly player, take care of him. It's three to two. They have gotten the rocket base back, which is you know going to happen. Dealing with the arrow again. This time, fortunately, I've got help again, and so he is forced to break off on that one. Um, unfortunately, because I was not watching my mini map as you should have been doing, I failed to notice that the other plane in the zone, well below me, was in fact the Tempest. And uh, Martin started to climb and was able to clip me with a double shot from those cannons, which are of course extraordinarily powerful. Uh, great snipe on his part, definitely some revenge for the earlier knockdowns in that rocket base. And they still have the rocket base, which is now working on capturing some of our zones. So I'm watching to see where he is at um, as I come up after this arrow, or at least gain some altitude. And I see him in the distance there. I'm going to stick a bot on him and then swing over to take a pass at the Hornet. Because this is the best thing I can do right now. I've noticed we're up four zones to one, right? And I'm like, okay, the B-32 has got to come here at some point probably. And indeed, there he is. I'm just going to frustrate him. I'm going to use uh, my forward firepower and my turrets to clear uh, 60, or excuse me, 40 points back to us uh, from taking down this heavy fighter. So just spin it around, get a little bit of help there again uh, from the air defense aircraft, and down he goes. And so some of the bombing that was done has now been left out. And he's got a little bit of HP off, um, not a lot. But he's going to have to turn around and take another swing through the zone. In the meantime, I'm kind of swiveling around trying to figure out what else is going on. And I wonder, with our rocket base pounding, can I take it or not? But it ends up not mattering. One thing I am really bad at, by the way, is watching the counter at the top. I'm more concerned about the zones. And I need to be better about watching the actual numbers because that can impact your play and, of course, your personal points and thus your experience and your silver at the end of the match. Uh, to be able to kind of tailor your gameplay to you know, what's going on in the match. If you know you've got it already won, you can kind of take the closest bot or plane and see if you can earn a little extra. So anyway, a, a decent match, I thought, um, especially with not having played the XP-58 in forever. Uh, was able to capture three zones, knock down 12 aerial targets, get a good bit of damage there. Um, was great playing against a couple of o OWSS guys uh, and Martin and Hole Puncher. Uh, both veteran pilots who've been around for a long time and did equally well on their end. Uh, just so happened that we had the favor of uh, the bot gods and then also 
uh, with my bomber pilot switching over to another heavy. So uh, Martin, of course, uh, reached out afterwards. Uh, good sportsmanship, and uh, I appreciate that. Uh, we had a great chat afterwards, and this is some of the best parts of World of Warplanes uh, to have good matches like this and uh, and to be able to um, you know continue some of those uh, that aerial sportsmanship afterwards. So great, uh, great flight. I enjoyed the XP-58. I do think if it's one you want to pick up for dealing with some of these bots, uh, not bots, some of the bombers in the marathon, uh, might be a way to go. You can see the XF-5U down there, the pancake might be another option for you if you don't want to spend gold at all. And of course, if you have some of the other tier eight heavies, uh, you can do that as well. You can see Martin and, and Hole Puncher both did pretty well there in terms of capturing zones and, and laying out damage, the Tempest especially. You know, he did as much damage in the Tempest, I think, I did as I did in the XP-58 here. So um, good flights on their side, but, you know, and the rock, paper, scissors of World of Warplanes, you know, a couple of heavies against a, a, a multi-role, uh, especially an aerial-focused multi-role like the Tempest PV and uh, heavy bomber. Even it's a very good heavy bomber like the B-29. Um, kind of makes a little bit of a difference there in terms of the meta of the game. So just a basic setup. And again, most people are not going to be flying this specialized or with high point pilots. I do have a decent point pilot in it. Put my Sabre pilot in here, uh, which certainly helps with the guns. I think Marksman 2 is something I would reach for first before performance skills on this plane. My rear gunner just had five points, and so I just had defensive fire and uh, first aid. First aid to keep him from getting knocked out as much. Defensive fire, because in a heavy fighter like this, I'm not spending a lot of times on the, on the guns. And so if I can have the AI bot gunner get a crit on another bot aircraft and they peel off, that's probably the best result for the most part that I'm looking for with defensive fire on these guns. Uh, but your mileage may vary. In terms of the actual layout, um, I've gone with lightweight wing frame here to improve the roll rate. Um, something I struggle with in heavy fighters, but I'm not sure I would necessarily recommend that. Um, you do already have a decent turn time as a heavy under 14 seconds. This one doesn't move it down a whole lot, so that's something to think about. Uh, of course, I do have the gun sight on it for now as well. I think that also helps with making sure these guns do what they need to do. On the uh, engine slot, I do have the, the boost speed. Uh, many of the high tier heavies have great cruise speed. It's their maximum speed, their boost speed that they struggle with. And so I felt like it was worth it. Um, once specialized, you get this plane over 800 kph, uh, which would be excellent speed for a tier eight fighter, a heavy fighter, and something to keep in mind. Uh, and then of course, gas separated action. You're tempted to go long barrels because of the shorter range on these. I think 576 meters is, is the standard range on these, something like that. And so you're tempted to put those long barrels on, but the reality is even with really good long barrels, you're not going to get it above maybe 650. And, and you're kind of pushing outside the zone in which the accuracy of the guns is functional anyway. So I really do think gas operated action is probably your best bet. If you do plan on just chasing bombers in this though, um, you might be tempted to go with burst length uh, on the bolt carriers and then picking up the rate of fire secondary there. But I still feel like gas operated action is probably the way to go. Um, just make sure you have good trigger control letting off of these. As you saw behind the B-29, it's okay to not just hold the trigger down. You saw me fire until it turned yellow. Give it a second. Give it a pulse. Go again, right? And that seemed to work out pretty well. Um, in terms of equipment, I've got fire extinguisher on this one. I, I would waffle back and forth. The gunner's not as important, so I think fire extinguisher is probably the way to go. Um, and then I've got um, engine restarter because your speed is your life in a heavy fighter. Um, and fortunately, both of these are unlocked in a stock configuration, which is super helpful. Unlike some other planes, I believe the arrow only has one to begin with, and that's problematic because then you ha kind of have to, especially with a rear-mounted engine, place it entirely on that engine restarter, and then you don't have the extra boost when you need it. So in that sense, this is a lot more comfortable to fly than the arrow, even though I think the arrow is overall a better heavy. And then, of course, just some basic silver uh, ammunition in there to help with um, hopefully a little bit of the DPS and uh, the uh, damage that is done through crits and through fires as well. So that's my brief overview of the XP-58. Um, I've really enjoyed the games I've played in it, and um, I do think it's a worthwhile addition to your hangar if you have some extra gold sitting around. Uh, someone commented on that this week. I do have a lot of extra gold sitting around. I played tanks for 10 years, played planes for 10 years. I have everything you can buy with gold at this point. 
So every time I buy, say, a new premium that they've put on sale that I don't have, and it comes with 12,000 gold, as World of Warplanes is wont to do, it just sits there. I don't, you know, I buy premium with it or whatever else. But so, um, but, you know, this is, um, this is might be worthy of your gold. Uh, if you've got some extra lying around like I do, especially since you don't have to put out, uh, foot any more cash for it. Um, this might be a place to put it, especially because we know we're going to see a lot of bombers over this marathon season. Uh, I will have a video out on the Betty. We're going to bring Corvus out with us again, and uh, I'm going to be flying something unusual in tandem with the Betty that I think will be fun. Um, and if you know a little bit of aircraft history, I'll give you a hint and that we are going to follow the odd couple of Frank and Betty this weekend uh, to take you on a tour of that. So enjoy the weekend, the sales, take advantage of all of those, put some camo on your aircraft, buy some consumables, transfer your free XP, pick up you know some that premium you've been wanting for a while since they're all on sale, or rebuy that favorite Tech Tree aircraft. And I hope I get to see you in the skies over the next month as some of you vie for the Betty and also vie for some of the rewards that come with that marathon. So until then, good luck and good hunting.